Today, I'm responding to an inquiry from one of my regular followers and subscribers to my channel. He would like us to help him understand what benchmark and non-benchmark bonds are. If you look at the Zambian prospectus for bonds, which is issued out every month, you are going to notice reference to benchmark and non-benchmark bonds. For instance, the prospectus, which was issued in March 2022 with reference number 03-2022-BA shows non-benchmark bonds with 10 years of 2 years, 7 years and 15 years. Below this, you will find benchmark bonds with 10 years of 3 years, 5 years and 10 years. What are these? What do they mean benchmark and non-benchmark bonds? This is what my follower or subscriber to my channel would like to know. Also, you'll be retiring very soon with an estimated cash value of 1.4 million that you would like to invest in government bonds. It's already reflected on the tenures that he wants to invest in and you would like to invest in a two-year or a seven-year government bond. So, which government bond should he go for? Should he go for the two-year government bond or the seven-year government bond? And should he be concerned whether the bond is a benchmarked or non-benchmarked bond? This is what I want us to look at in today's video. Let's get started. Hello there investors and welcome to a special episode of the Ndalama Insights Business Show with Mukonki Mukonkela where we turn your challenges into actionable insights. As I've already explained in my intro, today I'm looking at an inquiry from one of my subscribers and regular followers of this program. They would like to know what benchmark and non-benchmark bonds mean and also what bond they can invest in, a two-year or a seven-year bond. So we're going to look at that in today's video. But before we get started, a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, what I'm offering in today's video should not be taken for financial advice. I'm offering my opinion based on my experience and research. Should you require specific financial advice on investing in bonds, you should consult with a registered financial advisor. Having said that, I can guarantee you that you are in safe hands because I'm a qualified chartered accountant, in fact, a fellow member of ACCA and Zika with vast experience, and I'm pretty sure I can speak on this subject. So let's get to it now. Here's a quick recap of government bonds, but I would encourage you to watch this video here in order for you to understand how you get started investing in Zambian government bonds. A government bond is simply a loan that is issued by the government to investors in return for incomes which are normally coupon incomes as well as interest income that the investor makes as a result of investing with the government or as a result of lending money to the government. The main difference between a loan that you'd get from a financial institution such as a bank and government bonds is that with government bonds you can actually trade them. You can sell them on the financial market. As a result, bonds have market prices. When a bond is first issued, it is issued in the primary market. And for Zambia, the primary market or the issuers of bonds is the Bank of Zambia. So the Bank of Zambia is the one which acts as the primary market for issuing bonds in Zambia. The price at which these bonds are bought in the primary market is normally determined at a market auction. Again, remember to watch the video where I talk about an overview of government bonds in Zambia and you're going to understand how this auction process actually takes place. Once a bond is issued, the investor that buys this bond is then able to trade this bond in the secondary market. So they are able to buy or even sell bonds on the secondary market. The price for bonds in the secondary market is determined by market conditions. 
we see that when bonds are offered or issued, they are issued with different maturity dates. As a result, they are going to have different interest rates as well as prices when they are traded in the secondary market. So the interest rate determines or contributes to the determination of how much a bond is going to cost on the secondary market. So the prices for bonds on the secondary market is determined by market conditions such as the prevailing interest rate at that period. So for instance, if you bought a bond with an interest rate of let's say 10% and then a few months from now interest rates go up to 15%, it means that your bond is actually going to lose value or the price is, is not going to be that competitive. And so that is how interest rates affect the prices of bonds. So when a bond is trading on the secondary market, its price is affected by different market conditions, including interest rates. So that was a quick recap of what I covered in my previous video. Now let's look at what are benchmark bonds and non-benchmark bonds. Benchmark bonds are bonds that can be reissued or reopened by the issuer, in this case, the Bank of Zambia. Currently, the Bank of Zambia offers three bonds that are benchmarked. These are three-year bonds, five-year bonds, as well as the 10-year bonds. These are the bonds that are benchmarked. When a new benchmarked bond is issued, it means that it is open for reissue. The following month or whenever the bank of zambia would like what happens is that when the bank of zambia issues a fresh or a new benchmarked bond this month and people subscribe to that bond it means that the bank of zambia can reopen the same bond with the same reference number next month and people can subscribe to that exact bond with the same maturity date as well as coupon debts. So that is what benchmark refers to. It means that this bond is open to reissuing in future or the following month. So the reason why the Bank of Zambia reopens benchmarked bonds is so that they can increase volumes on a particular bond instrument. So let's take a look at the prospectors for March 2022 with reference number 03 stroke 2022 stroke BA. If you look at the three-year bond under benchmark bonds, you are going to see that it's a new issue. The reference number for this three-year benchmarked bond is ZM1000001051 That is the reference number. So when it is reissued next month, it is going to have the exact reference number and that is how we know that this is a reissued bond the reference number is the same as well as the tenure and maturity dates so this three-year benchmark bond at 400 million issued now let's assume that the entire 400 million was subscribed because it is a benchmark bond it means that next month the bank of zambia could decide to increase the volume under this instrument by reopening it and issuing a further 400 million under the same reference, under the same bond tenure, as well as maturity and coupon dates. This means that when this bond is reopened next month, which is April 2022, its volume is going to go up to 800 million in total. So the Bank of Zambia has increased the volume on this instrument. The reason why they do this is because they want as many people as possible to hold on to this instrument. Now, non-benchmark bonds cannot be reopened in future. Once issued, non-benchmarked bonds are fixed for the maturity date as well as coupon debts and cannot be reopened in future. And that's the key thing. Non-benchmarked bonds cannot be reopened and their volumes remain the same throughout the duration of that bond until maturity and the volume cannot be increased further. So once a non-benchmark bond is issued, 
its volume is fixed until maturity date. When you look at the reopened benchmarked bonds, you find that they sell at prices which are slightly higher than the normal or the previous bond with the same reference number, even where the maturity date and coupon dates are exactly the same. Why is this so? So the price is higher compared to the previous month or the fresh or the new issue because when you look at bonds and how you get your interest on the coupon, you receive your interest on the coupon twice a year every after six months. So when you buy a reopened bond, it means that one month has already passed and that is why you are going to pay a higher price to buy a reopened bond to compensate for that portion of the coupon which you are going to get on the coupon date which is five months from today. For instance, the March Prospectus has a three-year bond which will mature on the 23rd of March 2025. It has a full three-year cycle. Since it's a benchmarked bond, it was reissued the following month on the 29th of April 2022. The reference number of this instrument, ZM1000005182, is the same as last month. And that's how we know it's the same instrument. And this is the one that's just been reissued. Note that the majority and coupon dates are fixed. The first coupon payment will be six months from March 2022, which is September 2022. By 23rd April, this instrument will have run for one month. So it means that the first month of the coupon cycle has already passed. If you bought this instrument in April 2022, you bought a reissued instrument that has only five months remaining before it pays its first coupon because the coupon and maturity dates were fixed at the time the instrument was first issued. So because in five months time, you will receive a full cycle coupon payment like you had held the instrument for six months, you will have to pay for that one month that you will be paid in six months time. So you will pay a higher price for the instrument that is reissued or reopened in April 2022. Now, why is it important that Bank of Zambia increases the volumes of bonds or instruments? Why is this significant? When volumes of bond instruments are huge, it means that we expect many investors to buy these debt instruments. As a result, we expect the secondary market to be an active secondary market because it's got many investors that are buying and selling these bond instruments. Where there's an active secondary market, it means that there's a ready market for you to buy and sell the bond instruments. And this can only happen where volumes of bond instruments are huge such that many people can actually hold or buy these bond instruments. It's unlike non-benchmarked bond instruments where we find that a few institutional investors actually buy these instruments and hold on to them until maturity date. When we have a few institutional investors holding on to bond instruments or investments until maturity date, it means that the market is actually not active. Because when you go on the market, you will not find that bond readily available for you to buy. But if the volume on an instrument is big, chances of you finding a bond instrument and buying it or selling it are actually high. So this can actually be compared to the way we use money for trading. So where there are huge volumes of bonds on the secondary market, it is actually an active market and it's easier for you to buy and sell bonds. So that is the interest of the Bank of Zambia in increasing the volumes on bond instruments. Secondly, it is very important because if an instrument is actively traded on the secondary market, it creates its own pricing model and no individual is going to offer you a price which is below the market price. If there's no active trading on an instrument, it means that someone can offer you a price which is even lower than the actual market price. Now, in Zambia, the secondary market is the Lusaka Stock Exchange or the LUSE. At the moment, the Lusaka Stock Exchange does not show prices of actively traded bond instruments. And this is something that the regulators need to address. 
So if you are an individual that would like to buy a bond on the secondary market, you would have to find someone that holds that bond and then the two of you would have to agree a reasonable price. However, you can also contact the Bank of Zambia for an opinion of what a fair price is on that particular bond. Now, let's say you want to buy a bond from the Bank of Zambia. Which one should you buy? Benchmarked or non-benchmarked? Well, the decision really depends on the reason why you want to buy that bond. And there are basically two reasons. The first one could be you want to invest the money that you have in order for you to realize a financial goal that you are hoping for. For instance, you want to save money for your child's university fees, which are due in three years' time. And so you'd want to buy this bond. The second reason could be that you are a trader and you actively trade in bonds. Maybe you make profit from trading in bonds on the secondary market. And so the reason why you want to buy that bond is very important when it comes to determining whether you should buy a benchmarked or non-benchmarked bond. Remember, if it's a benchmarked bond, it means that it's open for reissuing in future or the following month. And this affords you the opportunity to increase the volumes on a debt instrument that you might have bought in the previous month whose volumes are lower than what you would like to sell. So if you are an active trader on the secondary market, investing in benchmarked bonds is reasonable because you'd love to increase volumes on an instrument that you might have acquired in a previous month and you now want to increase volumes in order for you to sell that instrument. And also, if you are a trader, you are really interested in the changes in the interest rates as well as the pricing of the bond and all that information. You also want to see, you know, how the market yield curve is affecting your investment and all of that. So if you are an active trader, you would be interested in buying benchmarked bonds. If you don't actively invest on the bond market and the reason that you want to buy this bond is simply to invest money so that it doesn't lose out to inflation or because you want to achieve a goal, pay for your child's university fees in three years time or buy a house in 10 years time, then it is not necessary for you whether it's benchmarked or not because you are not actively trading. So when you invest in a bond, it really doesn't matter whether the volume changes or not. When your reason for buying a bond is simply because you want to invest that money so that it doesn't lose out to inflation or simply because you want to realize a financial goal, pay your child's school fees or buy a house or buy a car, the reason or the only consideration should be how long you need to keep that money for before you can actually realize that financial goal. That is why when it comes to investing, not just in bonds, it's very important to start with your financial goals. What are the reasons why you want to invest this money? Because that is how you determine the tenure of your investment. If you want to invest in a child's school fees, which is due in three years time, it is pointless for you to buy a 10 year bond because you only need to invest that amount for the next three years and look out to ensure that this money is safeguarded from erosion by inflation and also that it gives you a return on your investment. What you don't want to do is to keep this money at a bank where by the end of three years, that money would have lost out value completely and you'd actually be, you know, maybe even owing the bank in, in three years time. But what you want to do is to invest that money to ensure that it's protected from the adverse effects of inflation and it also gives you a reasonable return on your investment and by the time you want to realize your, that goal of sending your child to university or buying that, that vehicle or building that house, that is enough period for you to recover or get back your money from that investment. So as to whether it's benchmarked or not really depends on why you want to buy that bond instrument. Are you actively trading or do you just want to save money? So when I go back to my subscriber who's inquiring as to benchmark and non-benchmark bonds, you need to know why you want to buy this bond. Is it for actively trading? Are you going to resell your investment in this bond later on? If you are, then consider investing in benchmarked bonds. 
If not, it really doesn't matter whether it's benchmarked or not. Because all you are trying to do is invest money so that you can utilize it in future. Maybe when you retire, you'd want to have a regular source of income, probably through coupon you know, payments that you get twice a year. And that would be enough revenue for you to sustain yourself. Maybe for the next, you know, I don't know, seven years or two years. So I'm not really sure why you selected two and seven years. Because you are saying you'd, you are going to retire very soon and you want to know how to invest that money, the 1.4 million. So whether to invest in benchmark or non-benchmark bonds really depends on how you are going to use that investment. If you are going to actively trade it, consider investing in benchmark bonds. If it's just an investment where your interest is in the, is in the coupon income, which you are going to get every, you know, every year or twice a year, then it really doesn't matter whether it's benchmarked or not. Now, let's take a look at the second inquiry where my subscriber is asking that they have a 1.4 million and they want to decide whether they should invest in a two-year bond or a seven-year bond. When you look at the prospectors, you find that two-year and seven-year bonds are actually non-benchmarked bonds, meaning that they are not open for reissuing in the future and also the amount you want to invest is actually above 500,000 which allows you to compete in the competitive window so you can actually directly bid to the bank of zambia by offering them an interest rate but that is quite complicated especially for a new investor so in my computation or uh, which we are going to do very soon i'm going to assume that you are not competing in the competitive window, so you are going to go with the auction price that the Bank of Zambia offers. Now, with regards to which tenure you should go for, two years or seven year investment, the decision, let me remind you again, depends on why you want to invest. Because the reason is what determines how long you should hold on to that investment. So you need to figure out why you want to invest in a two-year bond or in a seven-year bond. What, what goal are you trying to achieve by the end of two years? What goal are you trying to achieve by the end of seven years? If you are saying that you are retiring, would, would you be interested in a regular source of coupon income to sustain you maybe for the next 15, seven, two years? I'm not sure. So even as we go through these calculations, Keep in mind that the decision as to the tenure of investment really goes back to the reason why you want to invest. Also, your financial goals. So now let's take a look at uh, the return on investing in a two-year compared to a seven-year bond. The other consideration is, of course, the return that you are going to make on a two-year bond compared to a seven-year bond. And also factoring in inflation. Remember, investments of shorter term durations are of a lower risk compared to investments of a longer term duration, such as seven years. So there is going to be a little bit of a, a, a gap or a, a, a margin in terms of even the return on investment. We expect the return on investment for a seven year bond to be much bigger than the return on a two year investment. So keep this into account even as we go through these calculations. Now, in order for us to know the return on investments under these two bond tenures we will need to look at the cutoff prices and we find this information in the april 2022 results for the bond these results are always published on the bank of zambia website so go to boz.com and look for bonds and treasury bills and you are going to find both the prospectus that have been issued as well as the results so open the result for April 2022 and let's do this computation together. So we are going to use the results for government auction bond number 04 stroke 2022 stroke BA. These are the results that are going to help us get the cutoff price that is going to help us estimate the returns on investment for the two year and for the seven year bonds. I'm going to use Excel to do these computations. So if you want to invest in a two or seven year bond and you've got 1.4 million to invest, you need to find the cutoff price for these tenures to know the face value of the 
million. So let's do this a little bit. So we are, this is a government bond that we are comparing and we are looking at the two year bond as well as the seven year bond. Information that we need to get from the prospectors include the coupon rate. So we need to get the coupon rate. For the two-year bond, you see that the coupon rate is 9%. For the seven-year bond, you see that the coupon rate is 12%. The maturity date, very interesting bit of information here, is 3rd May 2024 for the two-year bond and 3rd May 2029 for the seven-year bond. The cutoff price and this is the price that we need to get, a very important figure, the cut-off price. So what is the cut-off price? Again, we are getting this information from the results for April 2022. So when we check the results for April 2022, we see that for the two-year bond, the cut-off bid price is 85.6406 so we put it there 85.6406 for the seven year bond if you just go down you'll find it's 59.0985 these are the cutoff prices very important prices for you to take note of now the what does the cutoff price mean it simply means that for every 100 kwacha, if you invest in a two-year bond, you are going to pay 85.6406. And for every 100 kwacha, which is the first value, you are going to pay 59.0985. That is what it means. So we are going to put the nominal value as 100 for both two-year and seven-year bonds. The cash available for investment is 1.4 million. So for both the two-year and the seven-year, we're going to make it 1.4 million. So these are the figures. You can decorate them a little bit. Highlight the important figure, which is the cutoff price. So what is the first value of the 1.4 million, both for the two year and the seven year bond? In order for us to calculate the first value, of the 1.4 million kwacha, we need to understand or know what the cutoff price is. This is the price that is offered to all bidders because it's arrived at, at the auction that the Bank of Zambia conducts every month. So in order to get the first value of the 1.4 million, you will need to multiply the 1.4 million by 100 and then divide it by the cutoff price so like this 1.4 million multiplied by 100 okay let's put the brackets and then you divide by the cutoff price for the two-year bond that's the price and then you enter so you do the same for the seven year bond. I'll simply copy the formula and let's put the commas. And this is what we get as the first value. Okay, brilliant. Now remember, bonds are offered in multiples, multiples of 5,000. Okay, so we need to find out what the multiple of 5,000 for these values 
are. So we're going to use a formula in Excel referred to as flow to help us quickly compute multiples of 5,000 of these first values. So equals flow, the first value that you got, then the 5,000 multiple and enter. This will give you an exact face value with the 5,000 multiple that Bank of Zambia is going to offer you. So the exact face value for the two-year bond is 1,630,000. The exact face value for the seven-year bond is 2,365,000. Okay, so we've simply converted them into multiples, 5,000 multiples which the bank of zambia offers now how do we know the exact cost value or cost price that you are going to pay bank of zambia in order for you to get the first values of 1.6 million and 2.365 million in order to get the exact cost price you need to multiply the cutoff price by let's see so you need to multiply the cutoff price, so for the two-year bond, 85, multiplied by the first value that you've just computed in multiples of 5, and then you divide by 100. So let's close the brackets, and then divide by 100. This gives you the exact cost price that you are going to pay. So I'm simply going to map the formula to the seven-year bond to give us the result and put the commas so the exact amount that you are going to pay for the two-year bond is one million three hundred and ninety five thousand nine hundred and forty one point seven eight for the seven-year bond you are going to pay one million three hundred and ninety seven thousand six hundred and seventy nine point five three this is the money you are going to pay today in order for you to earn a first value of 1,630,000 in two years time or 2,365,000 in seven years time upon maturity. So that's the cost price and the first values. So that's how you compute the exact amount you're going to pay Bank of Zambia today. And that is how you're going to know how much you're going to make at the end of the tenure for the two-year and the seven-year bond investment. Now let's look at the return on the investment because that is what you are interested in and this is what is going to help you determine which investment to go for. How do you compute the return on the investment? Now remember, with bonds, you've got two sources of uh, revenue, if you like. So you have the coupon income that you make every year and then you have the interest income that you make, which is the difference between the fair value amount that you are going to earn at the end of the tenure of the bond less the cost value that you are paying Bank of Zambia today. That difference is what gives you the interest income. Let's have a look at these two. To compute the coupon income, you simply get the coupon rate multiplied by the face value of your investment. So in this case, we say equals 9% for the two-year bond multiplied by the first value which we computed in multiples of five, that's the one. Okay, and then you enter, that gives you the coupon income that you expect to make every year. So the coupon income for the two year bond is expected to be 146,700. And for the seven year bond, it's expected to be 283,800. However, you need to take into account the withholding tax, which is 15%, as well as a 1% angling fee. I've already looked at this in a previous video. So, withholding tax. Fifteen percent handling fee one percent. And we are simply going to copy these two. All right. My computer is not so good at the moment. This gives us, you know, an, an effective um, deduction of 16 percent. So 
16%. Okay, so this is the total uh, deduction. So your coupon income is going to be charged a withholding tax and handling fee of total of 16%. So we are going to deduct this from the coupon income of 146,700 for a two, sorry, two-year bond and 283,800 for a seven-year bond. So the net coupon income, annual coupon income, is for a two-year bond 123,228. For a seven-year bond, it's 238,292. Coupons are issued twice every year, so we need to find out how much you are going to get every six months. So it's simply the annual coupon income divided by two, same as the seven-year bond. This gives you the semi-annual coupon income that you'll be getting. Okay, now for a two-year bond, it means that you will get this coupon income four times, isn't it? Yeah, it's a two by two, yeah, four times. For a seven-year bond, it means that you get, you, you get this 14 times. Okay, so what is your total coupon income at the end of of this tenure or at maturity. Total coupon income. So it's the four multiplied by the 61. Map this for the seven year. So you get, can you see, can you see the difference in terms of how much coupon income you make on a longer term bond? It's a huge difference. For the two year bond, you get total coupon income, only coupon income of 246,456. For the seven year bond, you get 1,668,744. That's a huge difference. So, the longer you invest, the more coupons income you expect to make, right? Now remember, there are two sources of income for bonds. The next one is the interest income, and that is the difference between the face value minus the cost value of your investment. So, this is the face value is 1.6 for the two-year bond minus the cost, exact cost price that you're going to pay gives you the 234 and 58.22. Let's move the formula over. For the seven year bond, the interest amount, again, a huge difference is 967, 320.48. That's how much you expect to make in the interest. So your total income for this investment, or these investments, total, total incomes are, so we add these two figures, your interest income plus your coupon incomes. And we expect you to make at least 480,514.22 income for a two-year bond and 2,636,064.48 for a seven-year bond. Huge difference. But again, don't forget, the longer you invest, the more risk you are, you are taking. And um, <laughs> so much uncertainty. Okay, we don't know what inflation is going to be. We don't know what interest rates are going to be. Your bond might not be that hot and marketable. And uh, you, it might, you might find it difficult to offload the longer, you know, you, you invest in, in longer term uh, bonds or the, if you invest in longer term bonds, that those are the risks that you expect to have. So the, 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 the bigger the risk, the bigger the return. But how do you know which investment to invest in?
first of all, I think we are actually comparing oranges to apples. <laughs> I mean, two year and seven year, not the same 10 years. So uh, I'm not sure why my subscriber wanted us to do it like this. Um, however, they have their own reasons. So let's have, let's have a look at the return on investment. What's the return on investment? And I'm going to do a simple calculation here. I expect that since our our income, the, the money that we are making on top of the money that we are paying Bank of Zambia today is uh, 480 for a two year and 2.6 for a seven year bond. The return on that investment, which I'm simply going to abbreviate as ORI, return on investment is the total income divided by the cost, okay, and we're going to multiply that by, by 100, that should give us the percentage return on investment. So multiply this by 100%, okay, same as here. Let me just copy this formula over and um, yeah, let's reduce the decimal places just to well, let's make it two. So this is the return on investment in terms of percentage. In terms of percentage, this is the return on investment. Is this a good return on investment? It depends on different factors. And one of the biggest factors is inflation. April inflation rate currently stands at 11.5%. Previous month inflation rate stood at 13.1%. So what is your real rate of return on this investment? So take into account this inflation rate. For April, your real rate of return is 34 for the two-year bond minus 11. Okay, same as, let's just roll this formula over. This is your real rate of return does that beat inflation definitely it does so always compare your real rate of return in your investments in these government bonds to other investments such as investing in a fixed deposit account or investing in real estate you could also look at other investments uh, such as you know investing in uh, starting your own business what kind of returns are you going to be able to make compared to investing in the bonds and so as you make investment decisions inflation affects your real rate of return so the return that you know you are expecting to make as an investor are you taking inflation into account because that is the return that you need to really focus on as you assess what kind of investment to make bonds real estate starting a business um, anything else so always look at the real rate of return and in this case we see that uh, the seven-year bond offers you a much bigger real rate of return and these are just incomes that we are talking about. So in addition to the first value amount that you had invested, you are also going to get these, uh, you know, incomes. So the coupon and interest incomes. So in addition to these amounts, the total incomes, you are also going to get the first value amounts upon maturity. And so this is the reason why many people are really excited about investing in, in bonds. And if you analyze the inflation rate, you see a downward trend in the inflation rate. The inflation rate is going down, meaning that the value of your bonds is actually appreciating in terms of uh, how much the return on investment is expected to be. So if this trend continues, that's a big plus for the investment in, in your bond. However, normally when it comes to inflation, inflation is the rise or increase in the cost for goods and services. And this is this 
increase is expected as the years go by, which is why if you look at a loaf of bread, as many would say, the price at which you used to buy bread maybe three years ago is not the same as what it is today. So naturally, in prices for goods and services are expected to increase with time. So a downward trade in inflation is really not the norm. What we'd expect is if the economy is doing well, it's a slight increase in the inflation. It's not supposed to be drastic. When it's drastic, then again, it's not a good thing. It's not a positive thing. But then inflation is supposed to be rising slowly. So this is a quite interesting scenario where we see that in Zambia, actually inflation rate is coming down. And this is a positive thing for your investment in the bonds. But we don't know what inflation is going to be in seven years time. It might be down or it could even be more than 11.5%. We really don't know what inflation rate is going to be in future. And for you to take that risk, you are rewarded more, which is why you have a bigger real rate of return on your investment if you invest in a seven year bond. And so these are some of the considerations or insights that you need to consider, even as you decide to invest either in a two year or a seven year bond. So when it comes to investing, doesn't matter what investment you're making. Looking at the effect of inflation on the return on investment that you intend to make is very important. As we saw in this example, it's a positive uh, real rate of return. And so investing in a two-year bond for 1.4 million, as well as a seven-year bond, beats inflation at the moment and gives you a return which currently exceeds even a fixed deposit account and so this is the kind of uh, thinking that you actually need to undergo in order for you to decide what kind of investment you should make but you need to be very cautious in when it comes to investing in bonds especially the long-term bonds because whereas inflation right now is uh, on a downward trend in zambia it is actually not the norm you find that inflation is, you know, the increase in, in prices of goods and services is actually expected to increase slightly in an economy that, that is doing well. And so having inflation going down is not really, a, you know, the normal way inflation works. And that is why it's called inflation. Where it's coming down is actually referred to as deflation. And so where inflation exists, we expect a slight increase in, in the prices for goods and services. And so we don't know what it's going to be in seven years time. So as an investor, you are taking a risk by giving the government your money, even when you don't know how much inflation is going to be. And as a result, you are being paid much more for taking that risk compared to investing in a shorter term bond of, let's say, a two year period, which is why you saw a huge difference in the incomes between the two year bond and the seven year bond, as well as a huge difference in the interest income and uh, and so you need to consider everything when you're actually investing in bonds it might look like the seven-year bond is a better option but you don't know what the future holds there are so many risks that you need to take into account and remember what helps you choose the tenure of investment goes back to your financial goals what do you want to use that money for so this is all I had to share in today's video. I was looking at what benchmark and non-benchmark bonds are. I was also looking at whether you should invest 1.4 million in a two-year or a seven-year bond. And these were inquiries from one of my subscribers and regular followers of this program. If you'd like a copy of the Excel spreadsheet that I used in today's computation, do get in touch with me. I'll leave my contact details in the description of this video. And the only thing that you need to do is subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button and also drop a comment. I want to hear from you what your feedback is. When are you starting to invest in, in government bonds? Are you already investing and what's your experience like? Is this something that people should venture into? I would like to hear from you. So drop a comment in the comment section below. 
and by the way i would like to thank the 500 plus subscribers yes we crossed over 500 subscribers this week and thank you so much to you who subscribed and if you haven't subscribed to my channel but you enjoy what i do do consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can be reminded whenever i have a youtube video out thank you so much for everyone who's already subscribed and see you in my next video